Canis podcast. We talk sports. It's going to be sports. It's going to have Don't to, interrupt me. No, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like that until I get the the, yeah, the It's intro. never going to happen it's, anymore. This intro is sick. Not a single person's complained about it except for you. Well, it's because it's basically us. <laughs> and our four listeners. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, four listeners. I appreciate yeah. the song. So, you know what? We listen to them. Well, they never said anything. So. Exactly. <laughs> so, today's episode. 60. Uh, 60. The Oilers legend, Jason Demers episode. Oh, yeah. Or the Michael Backlund episode. Yeah. Which will be fantastic foreshadowing for a conversation a little bit later. You know what? Screw it, dude. Let's just talk about hockey and let's talk about Calgary. Okay. Because what is going on over there right now? I don't know. As an Oilers fan, love it. As a hockey fan, hate, I hate it. it. Yeah. But as an Oilers fan, that team well, is going to lose their four best players from yeah. last season. To Foley, Backlund, Hannafin. Lindholm, Hannafin. All are not re-signing. Absolutely fantastic. For my like for me, um, knowing Calgary in the past, they're not going to trade them if they're smart. All they four are being them. traded at the draft next week, or like during the off season, or can, during you the can off still season. trade during the off season. Yeah, absolutely. But most of them are going to want like most of the teams are going to want a full year of them, and then knowing who they have at, at their disposal for a whole season, so they can build their team around it. Cup contenders are going to want all four of those. Those are unreal players. Who do you think if we were to try to get one of them? I think Backlund is a person that would be the best fit for us as a as a pure, yeah because our brilliant defensive forward our center depth um, is kind of yeah I'm sorry if we don't have all elite, three of our all right guys. Lindholm is elite let's not sugarcoat this he's elite um, he's too much he though. doesn't touch the quality that McDavid and Drysdale oh, produce no. like I would unfortunately argue... he's going to be third third line center if well Backlund would too but Backlund at least is defensive. Yeah. Like, very defensive. Whereas Elias Lindholm, his game is a top six forward, is not going to go well on the bottom six. So It yeah, would I definitely mean, improve our bottom six, though. Yeah. It absolutely would, but we don't but want... I don't think you Our bottom play. six, you don't want scores, right? You want, like, you want people who can contribute goals, but you want checkers. You want defensive studs. Yeah. Like you want... this. That's yeah. what Michael Backlund produces. Now, I don't think we get any of them. I don't think no. orders even try to go for anyone. Well, anyone. they're going to like, we're going to pay an arm and a leg because it's Calgary. Yeah, no, they're not. They're yeah. or there's aren't even going to look kick tires to be no. honest. I, I honestly don't think uh, they might like, you know what? No kick tires. Maybe the just to see what the price wind, is. That's it. Yeah. Um, maybe Hannafin. Oilers off season. They're going to get Taze. They're going to get Connor Brown. They're going to get uh, a right shot defenseman, something like Pareko to cover, to take over for CC. Ooh, I'd love Pareko. I think they go big for Pareko. I think they, because from what I heard, uh, McDavid was not happy about how it ended. Uh, delivered a, a very strong speech to the boys after they got eliminated. Um, that, to quote a player that remained anonymous, made me want to go through, run through a wall for him. So, if McDavid said something like that passionate, I'd probably want, want to run through a wall too. <laughs> yeah, so um, my, I believe we get Pareko, Taves, Brown, Yamamoto, CC, both gone. Keep our goaltending, um, and we run it back next like, year. Like, honestly, and I our think goaltending that's... wasn't that bad. It was just our, like, defensive mistakes that we've been yeah. getting. I think been we, I think we feel that, first off, Pareko pairing with Nurse makes Nurse a number one defenseman automatically. Like, And then Pareko's a very solid top pair defenseman. That's exactly what you need. He's Nurse a local boy, to, too. Pareko is from Emerson, yeah. So... I did call uh, Ekholm like a long time ago before the trade deadline. You did, so hopefully so you're hopefully, right before. Now I'm right. Yeah, hopefully you're right yeah. this time. <laughs> I think we only need three pieces to be honest. Just it'd a, be nice to get a goal. Like, yeah, you know, I was talking to my dad the other day. It's like, yeah, it'd be nice to get Hellebuck. Hundred percent, it'd be nice to get. Hellebuck. Everyone wants to get Hellebuck, <laughs> uh, and I absolutely agree with him. Like, yeah, but I don't think I don't think it's realistic to get rid of like Campbell's not going anywhere, especially with like the locker room type of guy that he is. He's not going anywhere. And the money, too, unfortunately. Yes, but, like, look at how he played in the playoffs last year. Like he only two played, games, like, two, yeah. But he single-handedly was the reason that we stayed in the King series. Oh, yeah. No, honestly, if he just bounces back and plays way better than this past regular season, that's fine. Edmonton needs average goaltending to win the Cup. Oh, yeah. 
That's what Vegas got that's to win Vegas it last did, yeah. year. That's, their, what, that's what Colorado their got the year Their defense was amazing. Their defense was amazing, too. And they basically had average goaltending. They had, Vegas won with Aiden Hill. Yeah, number th- you can't, third you can't, string goalie. You can't win with Aiden Hill if, unless you're Vegas, who has amazing defense. But I think the thing with both those teams is they had the elite offense, but they also had a team defense. Yeah. I don't think... I neither Petrangelo is an elite defenseman, a piece of garbage, dirty piece... Like, a dirty piece <laughs> of trash, but he's an elite defenseman. Theodore is really good. Um, McCarr is a great defenseman. The, like... McCarr is yeah. good. But Taves like, is good. Yeah. Um, Each of them had elite top pairs. Yeah. Second and third pairing were okay. Like, they weren't... Colorado's third pairing barely played when they won the cup. But they played well when they did. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, I'll take Kulak over any of the third pairing defensemen on those teams right now. Yeah. Kulak was unreal. Unreal. But he needs this good second guy with him. It can't just be DeHarnay. Yeah, that's true. DeHarnay would be a solid seventh, but not six, you know? But, um... Vancouver is apparently buying everyone. Lucic is going to sign in Vancouver. Did you hear that rumor? No. Yeah, they're going what? for Lucic. Vancouver what? is the stupidest organization in the league, dude. It's not even close. Why? Like, they don't want to do a rebuild, but they also want, don't want to be good. Like, they are okay with just but being why absolute mediocrity. Because they're idiots. They want a hometown guy that's going to bring some fans in, but they forget that you know, Vancouver be good. <laughs> hates them or hates Lucic for his Boston run. That's not smart. Vancouver's not going to be a good team again this next year. That's brutal. I, Thatcher Demko might get a bounce back. Uh, but, but he can't He can't save the team no, himself. No, absolutely Especially not. Especially since they already, they technically bought out their, like, I guess, second or third best defenseman. <laughs> so. Yeah, OEL. They bought out OEL. Like, yeah, that's not... Like, they're going to save Horrible a lot of contract. money this year, but... Yeah, then... oh, the future years? That oh, backloaded no. contract is awful for them. That <laughs> yeah. was not intelligent, that trade in the first place. Whatever. I don't really care. I hate Vancouver, so it's nice for me to see. And then Winnipeg still has their, like, top three... Yeah, Winnipeg people. is also another team that needs to go full-on rebuild right now. Like, Winnipeg needs to be intelligent on in how they handle this. Like, they're not, they're not a playoff-caliber team. Um, they're, they're not going to compete for a cup. With the roster that they have right now, and, and their whole roster, with the teams that are in front of them too. Exactly. So I, I would, I agree with you. I would just go for a rebuild. Their right whole now. roster doesn't want to stay there. Yeah. You do a full on quick, re- quick rebuild three years. Yeah, because you have Ehlers and Connor, and then you have a decent defense with like Morrissey and Pionk. Yeah. So. yeah. so you get a quick rebuild. You sell high on Hellebuck. You sell high on Shifley, yeah, I would say, Wheeler. I was going to say... Wheeler can't get you much, no. actually. I was going to say, if you do trade Hellebuck, you do you have to get like a starting goalie from coming back. Hellebuck would be a guy like... I'm not saying he's going to go to Calgary, okay? But the elite like prospect that you want yeah. is like a Dustin oh, Wolf type God. prospect. <laughs> Yeah. That's the only that's that's who you would trade Hellebuck if, for. If you don't get, ready in two if years. you don't get like a starting goalie right away from the Hellebuck trade, something like a Dustin Wolf would be yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, it would be like a Markstrom and a Wolf. To yeah. be completely honest with you, uh, but I wouldn't take back Markstrom's contract. Actually, I, I would do Vladar and Wolf because then Vladar can man the cage with whoever the backup is. I think it's Comrie, and then just go from there. Mm-hmm. But. Um, Ottawa, I mean, they should have been a lot better than they were last year. And then uh, Debrinket wants out. Debrinket wants out, so that's going to be tough for them. I don't think they signed too many people. Connor Brown was there, right? He got traded at the deadline, though, didn't he? Connor Brown? I think to Washington? Yeah. Yeah. But then he never played, so. Hilarious. Well, wasn't he, like, injured? For, oh, like, the... less hilarious than unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, no, he was injured for like most of the year or all of the year. Um, Montreal's gonna be awful again this year. What pick do they have this year? The fourth? Fifth? Yes, fourth or fifth. Yeah, it's which not high. there was like lots of people that were thinking that um, Matvey Mitchkov is gonna fall all the way down to to where Montreal is. Yeah, but they're not gonna get Matvey Mitchkov until like twenty twenty six at the earliest. But would especially you... after the. Russian government assassinated his dad for trying to get him out of the country earlier. Did he act? Did they actually? Absolutely, they did. What? It's all over the news. He was found murdered, and it was very, like it was well, obviously like, everyone yeah. said, "Yeah, it's the Russian government that did it." I'm like, yeah, probably. That wouldn't surprise me. But would you take a gamble to wait for like 
until like 2027. Matvey Mishkov is go is because he's like the second best, apparently the second best player in the in the draft. He's on maybe in the first. He's he's genuinely has better numbers than Ovechkin at the same like throughout his career. Yeah, I'm not saying he's going to be better than Ovechkin, please. But he's going to be like really, really good. He's an, he's going to be elite, elite yeah. for, uh, stri- like scorer. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, if you're like a team that isn't um like needing players right away then i would i would take a gamble if you're a team go. going on a rebuild absolutely they're going to do it uh, and here's the thing though so like fantilli can help now bedard can help now um and most of the Carlson other guys can, can help, help now. yeah all those Smith guys can, can help, help now. now mishkov if he comes over he can help now but he's not going to come over but he's also probably going to be the best finisher of the entire class Oh yeah, and the best oh, score yeah. of yeah. the entire class. So like a team like once like, he's here in the NHL, oh yeah, he's gonna a team like Arizona. You know they don't want to be good now. They want to be good later. They want to like win their cup in like five or six years. That's when Mishkov will be ready to come over here. Roughly, yeah. Right. So I don't know. Of course, you take a risk. You, you take Mishkov every day of the week. The guy's elite. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Now, how low are they going to drop? It just depends on how desperate these guys are for players. So. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm a little nervous for Bedard in Colorado, or sorry, Chicago. That'd be a crazy if he went to Colorado. <laughs> no, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, because they don't have anybody, really, to help him. No, he has nothing on there. Like, he, no, he was, he's a center, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, his wingers. An undersized center. The guy's like 5'11", 5'10", 5'11". Like, like, really yeah. like I think, huge. like, the only, like, quote-unquote tough guy... In Chicago is probably like Jujar, Jujar yeah. <laughs> and he also got like knocked out during yeah, the fight. Yeah, he can't so. fight anymore. That guy. No, so. Oh man, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting what they do in the pre in the preseason, uh, in the off season for yeah. Chicago. But we'll see. Uh what else? What other team? Uh, Toronto, Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, that's such a big question mark because they finally won the first series since like the caveman. Now, what are they gonna do? Like, like isn't Nylander's contract up right now? Or, like, I don't know. I think he's got a bit a bit longer still. He signed a pretty bad contract too. Uh, the big three, but in the still, Nylander's like, a pretty bad one, a pretty big one. I get they would have to, they have to go well, they all got rid in of again. Dubas. Yeah, they got rid of Dubas. Yeah, and they brought in Tree Living. Yeah, that's going to be so bad. Tree Living. You know what, though? Actually, Tree Living built that Calgary team on paper to be elite last year. They just oh, yeah, they just didn't perform. Horribly. Horribly. And that and the and the uh, trade for, uh, for Kachuk, he got lots of, like, really good players that unfortunately underperformed. But he got... He basically... Use what he was dealt with, uh, Kachuk leaving, and he got a really good return. So, I, I like for I, I, I uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna say like I can see him doing pretty decent in Toronto, but it's just the contracts that are coming up this year and next year. He didn't be... take into account the intangibles when he was in Calgary. He didn't take into account how big of an impact Kachuk's physicality and leadership took. And he didn't replace that. That's the issue. And that's what led to Calgary's downfall this year as well. With with Daryl Sutter, just not a great coach in the sense of just genuine a, like. a-hole, really. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting what, what goes on this season. Uh, that said, the NHL is a garbage league full of garbage people. They banned any oh, nice form segment. of. <laughs> they banned every single form of, uh, you know, special like event themed, jersey, like jersey, themed yeah. jersey. So military night, goodbye. Uh, Pride, Pride night, night, goodbye. goodbye. Um, like for the Oilers, indigenous, like the indigenous one, indigenous one, goodbye. Uh, the Asian heritage one, for Asian Vancouver, heritage, Vancouver. Uh, women's health, goodbye. Hockey, all of those hockey, hockey fights, fights cancer. cancer, goodbye. All because we had some people who use religion as an excuse to promote bigotry and hatred. Like, just ignore them. Like, just keep doing it. It's not hurting anybody. Yeah, do what the MLS or ML, MLS did. They said, okay, they decided not to take part in this. They're not taking part in our lineup today. Okay. That's fine. That's, yeah, that's fine. That's what you do. Like, yeah. you're not forcing anybody to wear it. They're not losing money and not, they're like, they're not getting suspended for not and wearing the, the jerseys. Like, it's warm up. 
You, you only, it's warm. You only exactly. warm up for like five, ten minutes, and then they go back to the locker room, and that's it. So frustrating. So frustrating. Like it, the like NHL honestly, is honestly, would have been <laughs> honestly would have been kind of cool if they played it if they used it during the whole game because it'd be kind of different. It'd be sick, but I mean, I understand why they don't. Uh, their jersey colors are for the teams and all that kind of stuff, and I it'd guess. be difficult for them to distinguish between the two on television and everything because they're both wearing similar colors. But like, not really because well, it's home and away. Away both, is usually white. Yeah, but both teams wear the pride <clears throat> stuff when they go on. Sometimes. Oh, I thought it was like the home team that does it. Sometimes both teams do. Oh, okay. But still, yeah. Um, NHL is just a. Backwards it's just league. it's just very disappointing. Absolutely, because you think you think they would want to like promote, like everything and like try to grow, and you see that with the NFL, you see that with the NBA, mm-hmm. you see that with the MLS, MLB. Mm-hmm. But then you look at the NHL and they're just going backwards. Yep, it's just they're catering to their older fan base, <clears throat> and that's the issue that the CFL has been I was doing for say, the longest yep. time. And yep. the NHL, in my opinion. They continue this way. It won't be a league for you know twenty years from now. It won't be a league anymore, which would suck because hockey is my favorite sport. So, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, what happened? Canada, Canada did poor at the U.S. Open for golf. No point in even mentioning that. I think our best player finished six over, or tied for like fifty something. So not Dang. not great. Um, Hadwin's <laughs> recovering from his uh, horror tackle. I was gonna say, like, Canadian is he Open. good now? <laughs> yeah. He was actually the highest Canadian <laughs> off his pain meds. Hey, oh! oh. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, the highest finishing Canadian. Sorry, yeah. The, the highest score goes to somebody else. I think Corey Connors didn't even make the cut. The poor guy. Nick Taylor also didn't. Unfortunately, there were seven guys in the field, though. Seven Canadians in the U.S. Open field. That's pretty. That's good. first time in my life yeah. that I've seen that. That was pretty cool. Or that I realized or recognized it, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, soccer Canada lost in the Nations League, uh, Concacaf Nations League final against the U.S. Two 0 uh, I saw highlights. It's not, you can't watch Canada soccer games here without owning uh, one soccer subscription. No, I'm like it's incredible how TSN or Sportsnet don't carry <laughs> these games. Like it's an absolute bomb. It's a joke, to be honest. Just embarrassing. So let's put some like rerun of some other sport or whatever, or some other game. Seriously, or, or they have four channels on curling. Yeah, like just use one for soccer. <laughs> you have five channels. You have like for sports that you have like a bunch. And yeah, you, I don't yeah. understand. TSN's so dumb though. And then the TSN twelve sixties out now too. Like, yeah, I sent them a very strongly worded. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Who uh, to Bell? To TSN. Oh, it's Bell's fault. Not yeah, but TSN, TSN, fault. yeah, but TSN was part of it. But, yeah, no. So, um, hey, man, I appreciate the guy li- reading this isn't the one responsible for it, so I'm sorry for yelling at you, but I'm still going <laughs> to yell at you. But I'm sure you're a good person. <laughs> I proceeded to yell. Um, Raptors drafted apparently the best shooter in the, in the draft. In the draft, that's good, because yeah. we don't have a shooter. So it was nice. It's going to help. Yep. Especially since Van Vliet is wanting yeah, to Van not gone. resign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if they're smart, they they trade away. They go full on rebuild too. They, these these teams need to be Honestly, not really shy need, about rebuild. I don't think they really need uh, like a full on rebuild, but they need to get a number one or two pick, like a high end talent, or do what Denver did and draft their superstar in the second round, forty <laughs> second pick. Yeah. Uh, NFL season, you know. Soon. Soon. Uh, more excited for the NFL than watching the CFL, unfortunately. You can't pay me money to watch the CFL. I mean, it's got shut out in the fo- in football. Where we can get a point by, uh, by kicking the ball. By just kicking it far. Yeah. That's it. It really does not take much to get a point in the CFL. Just embarrassing. So, yeah, no, I know. I don't watch the games at all. Um, the second the CFL comes on the radio, like they're talking about the CFL, like I switch the radio station. Like, I don't need a little, I don't need anything about the CFL. It's just a joke league. Um, I think that's it. Hey, yeah, it was, we just wanted to talk more about what's going on in Calgary, to be honest. So my prediction is that two of the four flames are gone at the, at the draft. You'd think Um, like the two. Uh, 
I would probably say Hannah. No, yeah, Hannafin and Toffoli probably. If it was the two, yeah, I, I think those are the safest bets for sure. Uh, I think yeah, two of the four flames are gone. Um, at the draft, uh, Pareko's moved. I don't think I don't know if it's. You think uh, he's going to be moved at the draft? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the draft is where you make all these big moves because you need to do it before the the off season so you can offer the contracts to the guys that you want to offer contracts to. That's true. If you were Edmonton and you wanted to get Pareko, what would you uh, get? I'm at the point where I I would almost include Broberg in any conversation now. Yeah. I, I was there since like last year, to be honest. So I I can I wouldn't mind giving up like a first and a Broberg. But that said, <clears throat> no, you know what? Like, there's no room in our left side for Broberg anytime soon because now we have Nurse Ekholm and Kulak for the next few years. We also don't have any good, but we also need a win right away. Yeah, I mean, I would include Broberg only if it's for like a Pareko. And it's, I would put like Broberg a, instead or of like a first a top round pick. six right winger. I, yeah, like an Xavier Borgo could be in there easily. Xavier for like Borgo. Up the yeah, for sorry, the like for. No, I was saying like, like the like um. Oh, we get a top six winger back. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. only a top six winger under a very team friendly contract. That's all I would trade for. Oh, by that we're very specific on things that we need. Like Broberg can be a very big piece to our. Yeah, he, he played really well in the minutes that he played last year. He did, and he was like an NHL contributor, right? But and you need to be seven, eight deep in the playoffs and defense to be able to win a championship. Every team has shown that this year. Uh, the last few winners have have shown that with their eighth guys dressing up, like every each team. Yeah. So that's why I'm a little hesitant on Broberg. I'm down to give up Borgo. Um, I think Holloway and Lavois <laughs> stay because they make the team next year. But, I, yeah, I definitely feel that Borgo is probably a piece that can be dangled and, and, and traded away. Or a Matthew Savoy or, or Carter Savoy. Which one do Carter. we have? We have Carter? Uh, Carter Lavois Savoy. And Carter Savoy. Yeah. If you were getting mixed up by the names. <laughs> no, honestly, <clears throat> if it's to improve the team right away and be that much closer to win the cup because because it looks like we're the favorites to win the cup next year so. yeah next year it's cup or bust let's not even kid ourselves yeah, this year so. was cup or bust but this year not as much as next year next year they make three trades three big moves we win the cup yeah yeah i can see that well anyways thank you everybody for listening episode 60 jason demers greatest oiler of all time <laughs> Um, the guat, the guat, the guat, the goat, the guat, the guat. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we will not be here next week. No. The week after we will, so we'll recap. Hopefully, a, a free agent frenzy. Frenzy Whoa. or frenzy? A free agent frenzy to believe. Looking and the forward draft. to it and the draft. Yeah. So, lots to talk about. Uh, we'll see how many of our predictions uh, come true. Yep. Oh, also. What? Uh. The Ben Stelter performer of the week. We haven't done it the last two weeks. Or like a oh, we, while. we did it two weeks ago. We did it two weeks <laughs> oh, okay. ago. Last week. Um I'm gonna go with Nick Taylor because you gone that first was the last like, few times. That was a long time ago. No, that was last week. We didn't have one last week, so mine <laughs> Hey man, listen, you've taken my Ben Stelter performed the week like six of the seven weeks, and I had to come up last second with something. I'm pretty sure I put like a third string goalie as a Ben Stelter so, performer yeah. of the week just because of one good game. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta go first, and my Ben Stelter performer of the week is Nick Taylor. <laughs> you forgot your Ben Stelter. Yeah. Um dang. Okay. I'm gonna go. Well it happened No, this week? Maybe I think this week. Jamal Murray. Okay. Good call. Jamal Murray, because he won the NBA Finals. And he actually played really well, too. Yeah. Good. So. All right. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Bye, everybody. See you next week. <laughs> See, no. In two weeks. See in, in two, two weeks. weeks. In two weeks. <laughs>